Edith Piaf's ex, a stuffed bird and the first choreo in Eurovision history? Let's talk about Eurovision 1959. The fourth Eurovision Song Contest was held in Cannes in France in March 1959 at the Palais des Festivals et des Congrès, which had been built for the Cannes Film Festival. Monaco, which had a very short trip to Cannes after all, made its debut, Luxembourg withdrew and the UK returned, which left us with a new record of 11 participants. The only rule change was that international jury members were only allowed to be amateurs, not music experts. This was supposed to reflect the music taste of the audience of the participating countries better, as Volare, Volare. Oh. which had become an international super hit, had only come third in the previous year's contest. Unfortunately, this didn't quite work. Domenico Modugno was back with Piove, Ciao Ciao Bambina. Ciao, ciao, bambina. Un bacio ancora e poi per sempre ti perderò which sounded a bit like Volare and became another international hit. In Eurovision, it only came sixth. Monaco was represented by Jacques Peel at its debut. He serenaded his friend Pierrot, the titular character of a popular 18th century French children's song. Mon ami Pierrot, qui fait le gros dos, qui n'a plus de scène. Pils was the ex-husband of French superstar Edith Piaf and the father of future Eurovision winner Jacqueline Boyer. All of this didn't help him with the juries. Monaco came last with only one point from the United Kingdom. Birte Wilke of Very Long Kiss fame came back for Denmark with a lot of <coughs> and strutting around. <laughs> It got her to fifth place. Germany had presented some of the first props in Eurovision history in 1957 and 1958 and again was a trendsetter. The Kessler twins, Eurovision's first but certainly not last twins, they had better hairstyles I think. In their song, they invited an unspecified boy to go dance with us tonight. Hallo boy, Abend wollen wir tanzen gehen. Hallo boy, heute wollen wir uns im Rhythmus drehen. Hast du Zeit? Dann komm mit, sag nicht nein. Heute wollen wir glücklich sein. And promptly included the first choreography. This was probably too avant-garde for Eurovision judges or the shaky vocals put some people off and Germany came eighth. Arguably the strangest entry came from Austria whose Ferry Graf proclaimed that the best Calypso was not from Rio or Caracas but from Vienna. The combination of Calypso rhythms and Alpine yodeling was apparently too strange for Eurovision audiences. Austria came ninth, shared with Sweden. The best looking contestant was arguably Francis Jean-Philippe, whose wee oui, wee oui, wee oui, wee oui was a bit repetitive, but still managed to come third. Mon bateau est tout petit. Il dort dans une bouteille. Et moi je rêve avec lui. Oui, 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 oui. The UK's second Eurovision entry was performed by Pearl Carr and Teddy Johnson. The song was about a bird and, of course, they even brought a stuffed bird on stage with them so everyone really got what the song was about. The catchy, albeit slightly ridiculous song made it to second place, the first of many, many silver medals for the United Kingdom. Sing little birdie, sing your song, sing and help our love along. Sing little birdie up above, sing the song of love. 
let's get to the voting. Switzerland led for most of the beginning of the voting, with Denmark close behind, among other things because of three points from Sweden. Then the UK took the lead. However, when Italy gave seven points to the Netherlands, the lead and ultimately the win was theirs. The Netherlands were the first country to win twice when 8 out of 11 participating countries had never won before. That's very greedy. The winning entry, and Beetje a little bit, was a fun, engaging song playfully performed by Teddy Scholten. In it, she sings that she wants to look into the heart of her better half to see whether he is faithful. The song was written by the same composer as Ned Alstun, which had won in 1957, and so Willy van Hemert became the first person to win Eurovision twice. Take that, Johnny Logan. Anymore, the third and second place songs were also performed again, which thankfully did not turn into a tradition. No, 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 no. 